In this video, I'm going to show you how to go get a character in Mixamo and use these characters. They're, they're really great. They're, they're the right size, and they might need a little bit of tweaking in the materials, uh, but uh, that, I'll show you how to do that. So what you want to do is make sure he's in a T pose, okay? If ever he's in a different pose, uh, just refresh the screen, and let's download this character. As you download it, you'll see if it says T pose, you're in the right spot. Then what you want to do is, um, I think I'm already talking about the animations here. Let's go and uh, just give me a second here. I'm going to go get a gesture pack, which has like 15 gestures. And what we're going to do is download all of those. And these, you can see the, the different animations if you click on it and you watch. You're like, yeah, maybe I want some of these when my character is just standing there and talking to the other character. So, you know, like these. And you can look through all of them. Uh, but if you, you're happy, download them. And this is what you guys kind of need to do is plan what is it the animations that I want to use if I'm going to do this. And what I would rather is you not have like a ton, but a couple and that they work. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're all learning and we won't have enough time probably to do uh, a perfectly worked out sequence, okay, uh, in our case. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in the uh, character. So I'm going to create a folder. And I'll call it, uh, give it a name. In this case, I'll call it Mixamo 1, because maybe I'll have a second character. And like I've always told you, give it a color so that you know where things are. And it kind of helps you, especially if you're a beginner. And I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to create, um, I'm going to import my character in this folder. So Exo is his name. So be, make sure you note the name. Re click that reset button. So it resets any of the settings in case it got played with. I'm going to import it. And it'll bring in all the materials and textures. Uh, this always pops up. Just clear it off. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the materials and textures in another folder just to clear it up. But before we do that, we want to look at our character. Let's see. Sometimes the mixable characters come in and there's something wrong with them. And in this case, you can see the eyes are off. So what you can do is here, it even says eyes. So you can go to eyes, click on it. And usually you want to click the one over here that says uh, uh, matte. And down here, change it from to translucent. So click save. And you know, you want to, not every Mixamo character will be the same way. So if you need a hand, let me know. Just experiment. And even if there's like a few errors, uh, I would still accept it. I think it would look great. So there's that Mixamo character. So I'm going to save him. And you can even isolate the area where the issue is. And when you fix it, you can really see if it fixed it properly. So now I'm going to put all these materials and textures in a folder just so it's not so messy. Very easy to get confused, especially when you're a beginner. Click the control uh, key to drag them all. Control shift. Just this takes a second. So the point is you get to see is if you decide to use a CG, what the workflow is. So, you know, because you need to make a decision soon, preferably this week. So there you go. Everything's in that folder. So now I'm going to go get the animations. So let's make a folder animations. So go, this is the easiest way you go open File Explorer, go select them all, and you're going to drop them in. So what you want to do is when you bring it in, you want to go get the skeleton for Exo. In this case, he was called Exo. So you got to get the skeleton of the right character because there might be several in here. So we're going to go get uh, that skeleton. So bring him in. Import. 
And right after we've imported it, we're going to test one of the animations. If one of them works, we know everything was done right. One thing that's important to be aware is if you did a second character, you'd have to re-import all these animations to that character skeleton. Okay, so that's important to note. So this is just for your exo character. So I'm going to drag one of the animations in. I'm going to press Alt S in a second so that we can see the simulate mode, what the animation would actually look like. So there you go, looks good. So maybe that's what I want for my character. Looks pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so there's a lot of others, you could text the others, but really, if one of them works, this is how you bring them in and look. You could also bring them in, look, see what they look like. And I'm going to show you how to create an animation sequence in the next uh, video, probably. Okay, I'm going to delete him. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to zoom in, but I, I notice the camera is moving a little bit too quickly. So just change it to instead of four, two. The default's always two. Four, I mean, and two is probably better when you're doing virtual production. One's a little too slow, but if you want to pan and move around slowly, that's that's the secret, basically. Okay, so you see now it's a lot smoother. So I'm going to create a level sequence, but before I do that. I'm going to create a folder called Cinematics. Press F2 to rename it. If it and we're going to give it a color so it's easy to spot. So create level sequence under the Cinematics tab. It moved. So if you're using this before, you would have looked somewhere else but now it's under cinematics give it a name one is probably pretty good because it's the first clip and what we want to do is we had previously dragged the animation in we don't want that we want to delete that and we want to go get the uh, static mesh of exo and drag it in so let's go get him wherever that is so i'm just going to go grab it drag it into the level that first pink one, you drag that one in. That's the one you want. There might, there's three others, so don't get them confused. And drag it right onto the timeline. So there, there it is. So now we want to go get the animations. And you'll see right underneath EXO, it says animation. So go get the animation you want. And it always places it where the playhead is, so be careful. So uh, we're going to place the playhead all the way to, at the beginning. And it works just like Premiere Pro, as you can see. And when it gets to the end, it cuts off. To keep things simple, right now we're going to just do short clips. I think everybody should do short clips, especially if you're a beginner. So, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to 24 frames per second and change this to seconds. That looks way more cinematic, so it takes two seconds to do. So do it now and do this for all your clips. And you, the red line is where the clip will end when you render it out. So make sure you you fix that. So we're going to move that all the way to the beginning. You can see it move. Now I'm going to create a camera. So nothing is filming this yet. So I click the camera button. And you get to see what the camera sees. So the camera cuts is not the same as the camera, but it shows you what the render looks like at the end. So it would look like that if you did nothing right now. What I want to do is make sure the camera is enabled. You see how that little white thing's turned on? However I move my mouse, that's what's going to be filmed. Okay, and the, what I also want to do is rename my camera to Cam1. In this clip, we're only going to have one camera, but it's a very good habit to rename your cameras. Because as you get better at this, you can have three, four, five cameras in one scene. And it looks really good when you have that many cameras, but that one of the tricks is you get the names mixed up. So I'm going to zoom in, and what you're going to notice is it's not in focus. So uh, I'm going to show you 
an easy way and then the better way in a second. So bring it right to the beginning. So we're watching it. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that, that mid shot maybe. So right now I'm looking at uh, click on the camera so you can see the settings for the camera and so instead of manual just disable if you want the easy way uh, but what I recommend is you leave it at manual and that way it allows us to you know use focus and depth of field and it's just looks a lot more cinematic so click the little eyedropper tool and click where the dude is and you'll see he's a lot clearer and if you had a, a background with like vegetation or so on, it would be sort of out of focus it would look really really good and uh, so this has a 35 millimeter lens which is we're going to keep it this way for this clip and some of the other clips we're going to make it a little fancier um I'm going to change also the camera from 16 by 9 digital film to 16 by 9 DSLR, which basically means you're like, this would be a more expensive camera and a much nicer uh, recording. So it makes a big difference. So I, I recommend you also do that to have a more cinematic look. So we're going to click that little arrow, brings you all the way back to the beginning. Um, I want you to see that there's a transform track and then look at the one that's under the camera. That's the one that you want to move to move your camera. Okay. So right now I'm going to put the playhead. I'm going to put it where I want. And once I'm happy, I'm going to add a keyframe. So the keyframe tells it where you want it to start. So this is kind of, a little bit hard when you're not used to it but let's just click right here so there's your keyframe that's where it's going to start so i'm going to move the camera and pilot it uh, somewhere else okay so I'm going to go, so I like the motion I have there, and what I'm going to do is change the, uh, the, the settings for the focus and click the keyframe, and so it's in focus, and then as I move it away, it'll be out of focus probably, so what I have to do is once I'm back there, I use the little eyedropper tool again. You, could, it, you can't really tell it with this scene, but if you've zoomed in and out a lot, it would matter quite a bit. So there you go. So there it is. You get to see that scene. Maybe that's your opening scene. Now I'm going to show you how to use the quick render. Um, so it's called the Legacy, uh, which works 90% of the time. So let's go here. We're going to change it. It's an AVI sequence. Change it to 4, 4K. So 3, 30, 80, 3840. And down here is where it's going to export. So make sure you have the right settings. So we'll click on that. And create a folder if you don't already have one. For my students, I would prefer it to be on their Google Drive. We use Google Drive for desktop because there's a lot more memory. It's portable. They can work on it at home as well. So let's just get this set up here. So we're going to render it out. Save your project in case it crashes. And here's the, the render. Let's have a look. Looks pretty good. Perfect.